Yeah. <coughs> Today, I had somebody ask me something quite interesting. <coughs> I know it's, <coughs> it's like <coughs> the same question that uh, uh, a bunch of people asked me, actually, which was the cast. Why does everybody ask a person who's in a cast? What happened? You know, you know. I was just always wondering. But you know, I mean, it's that they genuinely care, probably. Or, you know, they're just like, you know, what happened to you, man? They don't even know me, though. Half the people. But anyway, I guess what I'm trying to say is, uh, truly, out of a person who's in a cast, in their experience here in my hand here, yeah. Not necessarily doesn't make them happy when you say what happened. It uh actually is kind of it brings us more into a um state of like what the fuck <laughs> really you ask me that like I get asked that every day. I mean I guess that's why I get in that mindset really. I don't say that. I just uh, I'm like well you know I I explain to them what happened, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, was boxer fracture, so on and so forth. Anyway, um. I suppose why my mind, though, says it is because, I don't know, I just think of it as sort of a, um, as a daily thing, a routine thing. It reminds me of the song Nine Inch Nails, like, every day is exactly the same. I mean, it seems so exact, I get the same question every day for crying out loud, right? So, I, I guess you could, maybe you could see why I would think that. But... Um, I guess my r real, uh, response to any of this would be, uh, just to sort of ramble on about, uh, about just really much of nothing, I guess. I really try to put points and things in certain points, uh, certain objectives, certain aspects that really need to show out for it, but I guess what I, I could do with this is turn it around into, um, talking about... Uh, an elaborate dream, my past life of living for the last pretty much a year. I came out of jail, okay, so the four months I was staying in jail, came out last January. That was the first time I've ever been to jail, and never want to go back, ever. So, the best thing to do, would be avoid that, would be avoid probation. I don't have probation, so I don't, I don't have to worry about that. So, I'm lucky on that end of the straw, but now... I uh, get thrown into this world where I can easily get thrown into uh, such as, you know, uh, I started uh, robo-tripping every day just because I heard about it in jail that I liked ex well, started robo-tripping because I couldn't find quercetin. I was told about quercetin was the first thing. Everybody smoked pot, right? Everybody has already tried that in jail, at least. Anyway, they were just, they were talking more about, like, heavy stuff. Everybody wanted to mention the heavy stuff. You guys were talking about how to cook up stuff, like how to cook up pills and shit. And it was like, what? Like, really? I was like 18 years old. Well, actually, I went into jail 17 years old, okay? So it was October 3rd that I got thrown in jail. And my birthday, November 9th, I sat for my 18th birthday. Well, shitty, yeah, I know. Anyway, I guess my real point to it was when I got thrown into the world of full of all this crap, I started using it every single day. And what came out of that, though, was for three months of writing, well, and previously, it was probably a year before that, finally all came out into an elaborate dream. And what an elaborate dream is, let me tell you, is my book that I wrote. And where you can find it, you can, um, it's, it's not really self-published yet, I suppose, per se, it's, uh, it's reserved, it's on reserve, but it's not fully been published, because I haven't gotten all the errors worked out, I just, it's, I kind of set it down for a month or so, two months, three months, maybe now, <laughs> procrastinating at it, but it's, it's done, it's already written, it's just I don't have the money to produce it, nobody does, I mean, this shitty economy, you, I don't, unfortunately, have a job at this point in time, uh, I do odds and ends working and lawn mowing, so my life basically right now is a pile of crap. But out of this pile of crap, at least I take them to perspective on a daily aspect that I love my life. So 
it doesn't matter if it's a pile of crap or if you got a million dollars it's it's all about what you do with it you know what i mean i don't have to have all the money to be a happy person i'm already happy as can be from it and so, so but what i was saying here now with anybody who's been finding with drug issues i mean i'm I don't believe that pot is really one of the issue. I'm not trying to say that as well. If you have an issue to pot, well, I guess don't do it. You know what I mean? Like, find that you have issues, I guess, whatever, you know. I guess some people have issues with it, but I'm referencing things like let's talk about freaking melting down pills or, I mean, even people snorting pills and all this freaking pharmaceutical crap that's been coming out now. I mean, you get addicted to that crap, opiates for, what, I've seen people addicted to that crap for years, and get worse to heroin just because heroin's the king of all opiates, and, I mean, I've been, I've been noticing people start to trend on it, and binge it a little bit, and then switch it off to Adderall, and then switch that then to benzodiazepine, it's like, I used to do that crap, I mean, I don't anymore that much, and, uh, about that much, uh, I should explain that part. <clears throat> the only actual medication that I use is the benzodiazepam, which is clomazepam, at a 0.5 milligram, and I take one. That's not what other people do. Usually they take two milligrams, or I've seen a couple people pop like five or ten of those. I don't do that kind of crap. I don't want to necessarily do that. And I, unfortunately, in my life, became more of the person who went into psychedelics. Because I seen what it did to some of my classmates, the other crap, um, opiates and being addicted to that, and they would vomit right in the classroom. Like they'd be all like, Oop. like hurry up and grab the trash can and bring it back to the desk and just puke. And they'd be like, what? Dude, you crazy man? Like everybody's looking at you weird. Like I never want to have an experience like that. So I started doing psychedelics. Maybe not the best response, but well, um. I got into the thinking style that a delirium was also a psychedelic. Well, since it made you hallucinate, right? I never really read up, you know, until about a year later after I was using it every so often and then finally stopped doing it. Diphedramine. I looked up finally and uh, found out that it was just, well, it was a delirium makes you hallucinate, but it's not a real psychedelic. That's what I want. I want a real psychedelic that you can look back and reflect on who you were, your past into the future and thinking about it as present and here at that mindset I was very angry you know I mean my friends were the ones you know that one night they're like you want to do drama me and I'm like the hell's drama me and like well it's like she's she's like well it's kind of like a trip you know and Clay was there and Clay's like just sitting there and he's like well it's kind of a weird trip you know <laughs> and I was like well, you know I, I guess you know, I've never tried it before, but I wouldn't be mad about trying it. So, I tried it. I took 17, downed it, and that's what they told me that, well, no, they said, they said 12, and I took 17, because I just counted it out in my hand, because I, I really wanted to try 17, to tell you the truth about it, and honestly, dude, I, I had a crazy experience, I'll tell you that, like, there were dogs, there were people walking in the streets when Clay was walking me home, but the real saddest part about it was I started doing it more and more, and I told myself every time that I wouldn't do it ever again, because I had such an uncomfortable body feeling, but I would do it again. Now that is this vicious cycle of hatred brewing. I hated it, absolutely hated it, but it, and it's just so crazy that Finally, it's probably been two years, you know, that I discovered that crap. And finally, it's probably about a, about a month now that I haven't used it. Let's go back to the point when I was using it. It was probably every other day. And at some instances, don't get me wrong, there were weeks, you know, like a week that I wouldn't use it. But in that week, I'd use, you know, dextromethorphan and, you know, various other things. Like, um... Dioxysucrinate, or um, I started tripping a lot when I came out of uh, jail, and I suppose the lifestyle came because I was really influenced on a lot of people were talking about tripping, and the people I was talking to in jail were talking about tripping. 
I, I did trips before I went into jail, yeah, but I didn't do it every other day, or, you know, I did it like once a month, rarely, and I would just smoke pot other than that, and maybe occasional drinking, even rare to get alcohol at that age, but came back and it was just different. Started using all the various other substances and sort of went mad. Made, uh, made very, uh, they were very creative, you know, works of art. Uh, my songs, you'd find them on SoundCloud from Facebook on Tonic Structure. Um, there's like 33 uploaded on it there, but I've created some pretty weird ravings that I consider from my lifestyle, from my past experiences, and it's all come together in this sort of weird delirious blunder that I call an elaborate dream. That an elaborate dream at that point in time in my life, I considered when I was tripping, was my life was an elaborate dream, that, that, that everybody's life is an elaborate dream, and at the end of the book I ask, what's yours, you know, basically, and it's, it's like everybody's created some sort of poetic masterpiece from time to time, I mean, even if you don't think it is, it's, it's to somebody else it might sound like genius, you know, um, I mean, I had somebody who wrote something the other day, or some poetry, well, it wasn't the other day, it was a couple months down the road, but anyway, he said, uh, what so often colors us, uh, together is so often what draws us apart, and I was like, dude, that, that sounded kind of like, a, I don't know, some sort of, like, weird, like, model, or like, uh, some, like, phase that came to me, and I was like, dude, that was like, a work of art that you just said. It was like, well, I was out of my poem, he really thinks it's a work of art, you know, I mean, dude took it like compliment, but I mean, when you say something like that, it's like, I mean, not a lot of people talk like that, you know what I mean, at least not in today's day and age, and when people started, like, having poetry that referenced something like that, and he was talking about, uh, the rainbow, but it was like, so often what colors us together is what so often can also draw us apart. I know that he re-referenced it in that way, but he said at first, what what he first said was even crazier, but I remember ideology, I, I, ideologically, I thought, like, it was just such a good, like, theory, like, so often what colors, so often what draws us apart is what brings us together. And, it, and, and in that way, you kind of think of it as as being a, kind of like a double negative crossover, you know what I mean? It doesn't make sense in a sort of way. But I thought it was just something so genius at the time. At the time, though, of course, I was still on drugs. <laughs> a lot of drugs. But, um, I suppose it had that 